Welcome to BetSafe with myself, Alan McAnally, Sky Sports Soccer Saturday Pundit and delighted to see as ever with me Paul Dickoff, ex-Manchester City striker. This is BetSafe, the official betting sponsor of Manchester City and as usual Paul and I are bringing you week 22, our Premier League preview here on BetSafe. Now normally we're in the Etihad but we're in the most fantastic location. We're in Macclesfield at Ariga Bianchi, famous furniture interior design short and storerooms it really is a sensational sensational place and thanks to Nick Bianchi for letting us shoot here today it's only costing them one bottle of champagne it and is. a bit of lunch I wondered why you turned up with that man that yeah exactly as well, oh, I'm definitely taking here. something from here by the way it's fantastic anyway Michaelsfield Arriga Bianchi thank you so much okay I've already mentioned Betsy the official betting sponsor of Manchester City and in league uh, league preview week 22 we're, of course, focusing around my treble and Paul's treble. And, of course, if you like them, we will give you leading industry prices for your sportsbook wallet. And, of course, you, my friend, had a treble last week of 20 to 1. Just a little 20 to 1, Absolutely man. fantastic. So we had Burnley. Yeah. We both went for West Ham. West Ham turned over Palace. Palace 3-0. Stoke went to Sunderland. Which we both done as well. So you were cruising by Saturday night, because I did the Burnley game, and how they... they I had a great Saturday night. You had a great Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, 20 to 1 treble is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully you listened to Paul last week. I've let you down because my other team was Manchester know, City. You, it's you putting the mockers on them. That's yeah, exactly. Was. So I thought we were going to get a double-double treble, if you know what I mean. We didn't, but 20 to 1 treble, well that, done to Paul. that big, man. The last three trebles have come in. After yeah, we have actually. You got the one before, so we've been, we've come been on, going right. And the other thing is, I think somebody was asking us how they can find us. Well, of course, we will tweet where you can see our trebles. If you're already on BetSafe.com, of course, watching this Premier League preview, you know how to get our trebles. Click on the link and, of course, you can have... Or, of course, pick your own treble. Not a problem. You'll get the best price on BetSafe in BetSafe land, as you always like That's me to one. say. OK, let's start with the trebles right now. Bournemouth, Everton and West Ham. Bournemouth against Watford. Yeah, just look, we speak about it every week. Um, Bournemouth at home, very hard to play against, play good attacking football. Um, and Watford, I don't think they've won in their last five They're games now. A bit, they are they? five or six games, I think I think they is. might lose a Gallo as well. I think, uh, I think West Brom might be able to take a Gallo. West Brom, I, look, I think if a Gallo becomes available, there'll be three or yeah. four clubs that'll want to take them. But he hasn't uh, really got it going at Watford this year. He's not, he? but you know, Watford as a whole, they, they started okay. Um, but the last few weeks, mm. you know, that they're really, really struggling. I don't think they've not won since... I think it's over a month now yeah. um, since they beat Everton at home and they're on the slippery slope at the minute. But I just, regardless of who Bournemouth are playing at home, yeah. I always fancy Bournemouth to get something down there. I think you and I have made a few quid actually out of Burnley and Bournemouth both playing at home. I know Bournemouth get turned over the other week, but I think at home is probably where they might lie, whether they're going to actually stay in the division. Yeah, it is, and they score a lot of goals at home, you know, struggle away. Um, and Watford, um, really, really struggling. Bournemouth 45 on Betsy if the draw is 11 to 4. Watford a big 11 to 3. It's a big, big price. And if you think Bournemouth are going to win in over two and a half goals, which I think might be a good one, but I think we I think I said last week that Stoke were 75, and I couldn't believe that Betsy were giving us that price. I'm going to say again, I think Bournemouth to win in over two and a half goals at 21 might be a big price on Betsy. Crystal Palace versus Everton. Now, you and I have both gone for Everton. Yeah, look, a couple of minutes. And reasons. it's not really just off the back of the Man City result, though, is it? That, that helps. That, that was in my thinking because, you know, there's, I know we're going to go into that later, as poor as City were. I thought mm. the second half of Everton were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, but Palace, for me, they're really struggling. And, you know, we're, we're both big fans of Sam Allardyce. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but he's, he's got his work cut out there. He really has. Defensively, I think they've only kept one clean sheet all season. Mm. Um, and you look back to last season where they've done particularly well. Yeah, absolutely. That was their defensive record. You know, Benteke scoring goals, attacking wise, not a problem. But I just think coming up against Lukaku, Ross Barkley's back bang on form again, that um, they're going to have way too much for Crystal Palace. I was going to say, Schneiderlin coming into the Everton team as well is only going to make them more difficult to beat, but also give the, the, the role of Barkley a little bit more freedom to go and play further forward up the park then. He is, and he's, he's looking like the player that we all know he is, and uh, Lukaku's scoring goals. And um, I know Palace are trying to sign a couple of defenders in there. They're yeah, talking they about, are, aren't they? Um, Carl Jenkinson for Arsenal. Um, but I, I can't see him being the answer, you know. No. Sam, that, don't yeah, they? Sam's had four or five games now, and I, I really expected the way Sam sets up his team to be a lot harder to play against and harder to beat than what they have been. Couldn't agree with me, man. I've also gone for Everton as well. Everton 43 odds against 43 Everton after that 4 0 demolition of Manchester City. They did my treble. Uh, 73 to draw. Palace on 94 if you think Sam Allardyce can get things going for 
Crystal Palace. Again, Everton to win by two goals or more, 7-2. to two. I think Everton to win and both teams to score might be the one. I know Palace are struggling to score, but I did look. Just one of the ones I picked off Betsafe. Uh, .com, Everton to win and both teams to score at 4-1 to one. but certainly Everton at odds against are a big price Middlesbrough against West Ham you've gone for West Ham yeah and this is a big shout by the yeah, way yeah it is but, but Middlesbrough you know they started the season okay at home but, mm -hmm. but recently they're really struggling struggling to score goals I think they've only scored 22-23 goals all season um, I know he's went out this week in Patrick Bamford mm. and Rudy Gestead um, but they're not Proven championship players, but not Premier League players. Yeah, you know, that's the only. I'm really surprised that he's not went out and, and got a big hitter because goal scoring is a big, big problem for Just Middlesbrough. Just before we get into the nitty gritty of the game itself, and West Ham got a wonderful result last week, and obviously Andy Carroll scored a great goal. Pies, I mean, you can't you can't say you don't want to play for your football team, Paul. Surely not when last season um, Slavin Bilic has given the platform. There's no way he would have gotten the France team. No. Um, for the Euros, if Slavin Bilic hadn't given the opportunity. Um, he signs a new five-year contract at the end of last season. Um, he waits until he gets a million pound loyalty bonus before mm. Christmas. Takes that quite happily and then comes out and says he doesn't want to play for the club. And you know what it's like in the changing room. Oh. I know it's changed nowadays. Absolutely. If he was a teammate of mine when I played, I'd be knocking him out. Yeah, you, uh, you, there would certainly be a problem. I mean, it's poor play by Pi. I only mention it just because we're speaking about West Ham. I think Billich is. If you're done. a West Ham fan and you like and you want to bet West Ham, you're still going to be. I think Slavin Billich has been fantastic. Yeah, I think the he way has. he's handled it as he's, well. He's done it well, isn't he? Because yeah. he's, he's kind of been backed into a corner and he could easily have been, well, let's just say a little bit more animated than he yeah. has been for sure. Middlesbrough 29 to 20. They draw 94. West Ham 21 to 10. So a big price for West Ham. And West Ham to win and under two and a half goals, five to one, only because I was thinking it might be tight. Yeah, and I just think that you made a great point last week when we spoke about West Ham, but having Andy Carroll back and what a huge, huge, huge difference huge he has for him. Huge. Um, I know he's everybody knows about him in the air, big and strong, but mm. he's hold up play, bringing other players into the game, and the technique for his goal last week was mm. fantastic. Do you know what I really like? Do you know when he's fit? He's almost. He's such an advantage defending corners and defenders free yeah. kick because he comes back. They don't just leave him up top. It would normally be Lanzini or a pie yeah. that might leave further up Absolutely. the pitch or run a bit edge of the box. And but both the big man when he's fit. Both boxes is fantastic. He was unbelievable. His goal last week was a belt. Yeah, it? it was. He was higher than you were. That's not you humble, are. is it? No, no, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say, I never actually mentioned this. We should mention, of course, we're in Macclesfield, we're at Arigi Bianchi. Uh, furniture and interior design showrooms and it is beautiful. Come the on, wee man, the wee man sitting there. This chair is so big, it's like a three bedroom semi detached house. It's like there. a king size bed for me, <laughs> so I can just stretch out in it. Brilliant. Okay, um, West Brom against Sunderland. Uh, I've gone, uh, sorry, that was your travel, I should yeah. mention that. Uh, Bournemouth, Everton, and West Ham, 14 to 1. Slightly less than last Slightly week. Slightly less, still not bad, mate. 20 to 1 last week with Burnley, West Ham, and Stoke was the absolutely treble, fantastic. treble. Oh, it's coming up. Treble, treble. That's the one. Uh, we, listen, Betsafe won't let us do any more <laughs> if we're going to take that much money off him. Okay, my treble. West Brom, Everton, which obviously I've gone the same one as Paul, and Leicester. So let's start with West Brom at home to Sunderland. I mean, I've not really pushed the boat out. West Brom, 9 to 14 odds on they are. 29 to 10 to draw. Sunderland, 23 to 5. But I cannot bet against West Brom at the moment, considering also they're trying to bring in a gallo. And uh, Livermore from Hull. Yep, yeah, and Livermore. No, I know Jake. I actually played with Jake at Derby. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, he was a young kid on loan from Tottenham. Was he like that? Doing Fantastic good? player. Yeah, great He's attitude for a young kid. Passes as well. the ball really well, yeah. though, doesn't he? Strong, fit. Yeah. Um, and it'll be a great move for him. Um, but I'm, I'm with you on this one. I know we don't like to agree. No. A lot of the times, but West Brom all day long. And I mean, they were battered by Spurs last week, but Spurs, I thought, were exceptional. Spurs can do that to They were exceptional, like, weren't they? they? As they've shown already. Um, and I don't think Tony Pulis is getting the credit that he deserves. No, I, I agree you know, totally. West Brom actually. are sitting eighth in the league. Yeah, I agree. You I, know? I don't and think Emmy's really been speaking about them. It's sort of gone, gone unnoticed. You yeah, know? And, and Sunderland are, are really, really worried for them. Um, Jermaine Defoe, although he got his goal last week, I think 12 goals, only two off the top scorer. But if you look at Sunderland's team, the rest of the team have only got eight goals between mm. them. Hey, man, you and I used to play up front. We were fortunate we played for big football teams, you know, City and Arsenal. Mm. Bayern and Villa and blah 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 etc etc I don't ever remember going through a part of the season when I thought if I don't score we don't win no, no, no. it'll weigh heavy on J Jermaine Defoe although his attitude is very good he, he'll love that but eventually he's going to think hang on a minute yeah because it says it all he's got 12 goals this season which is unbelievable for the position they're in mm. and the rest of the team will get 8 
Yeah, exactly. And that tells a story. They've got to start chipping in with more Absolutely. goals. Absolutely. Well, I'm reminded again, West Brom 14 the draw 29-10, Sunderland 23-5 if you're a big Black Cat fan and you think Sunderland can go there and get a result, I doubt it very much. The only one I picked up I thought might be a good one on Betsafe is West Brom to win to zero. In other words, not concede, win the game 8-5 to five on Betsafe. I thought it was a belting, belting price. Now, Southampton against Leicester. I've gone for Leicester off the back of watching Southampton last week be beaten by Burnley 1-0. Yeah, who incidentally, they didn't play badly, but boy, they just don't score any goals. They need to get Charlie Austin back as mm. quick as they can. They had Shane Long playing. He only had a couple of half chances, but and I mean half chances. Yeah, and it, look, if you look at the, the top goal scorer this year, apart from Charlie Austin, is Van Dijk. Yeah, exactly. With four goals. Who there incidentally, he's a player. He is. He is. He is really. He was. He was by far the best player on the pitch. But I'm still going for Leicester because I think their firepower is going to be more. Van Dijk will be put on much more pressure, and there's. There's a, there's a scenario in my head with Leicester City that they need to start getting results. Away from home as well, big man. Look, well, I, I, I agree with you, but Leicester, here you go, have not won a Premier League game away from home this season. That's unbelievable. Say that again. When, I, I, when was the last time the champions of the Premier League that happened and you're, you're nearly at the end of January? So Leicester now. haven't won away from home in the Premier League since they won the title. Yeah, they won, I think they won away in Bruges, didn't they? And they, yeah, well, and they beat Everton, but, you know. Macclesfield, Macclesfield down down the road, who are having a yeah. fantastic season under John Askey, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, and no disrespect, they no. they could go to Bruges and win. Yeah, well, the, the way Bruges played correct, that night. Exactly. Um, but that's the only thing on that one is is Leicester's form away from home. Incredible. Well, I suppose I put my neck on the line here. Leicester seven to two, seven to two to win Great the price. game. The price is another one that's dragged me in, and Betsafe have got me there. Southampton odds on eight to nine. I can't help thinking they've got this wrong. 5-2 to the draw, 7-2 to two Leicester. Trust me, it's a big, big price. <coughs> Having watched Southampton last week be beaten by uh, Burnley. So my treble is uh, West Brom, Leicester and Everton all to win 17-1. to 17-1. One. One. I'm happy with Leicester and West Brom. Sorry, I'm happy with West Brom and Leicester, but West Brom and Everton, sorry. Yeah. The Leicester won with that stat you just gave me, having not won away from no, home. No, I think... I can see why I've went for it, especially in Southampton, the second <coughs> lower, talking about their goal scoring, second lowest in the division as well. So, um, two decent trebles there, big man. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Okay, the best of the rest. Right, this is a good time to talk about my treble being defeated right. last week. Man City. Shall we against finish Spurs. now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, can you want to Man do City right against <laughs> Spurs. Man City are 11 to 10, games at the Etihad. 5 to 2 the draw. Spurs are 13 to 5. Give me a case for betting City 11 to 10. Uh, I will always give a case for betting for exactly. Um I just think if you look at the start of the season um, when they won 10 games in a row, mm -hmm. then they hit a really dodgy spell. Um, and the big game that they had within that time was the Barcelona game, and they produced. They won the game. Um, they then went inconsistent, won a few games, lost a few games, and Arsenal came, another big, big game, and they produced in that yeah. game as well. Um, and I just feel... That off the back, the disappointment and the stick they've took last week, they have to come out and perform at home. Because Good. if they want in Man City, talking about winning the league, I think that's beyond them now. I really do. But to finish in the top four, I think this is a must-win game for them. I agree. Good time to throw in Claudio Bravo. He's being stubborn about the whole thing. He is. He and is. I know you've got quite a good start, and it's not a good start if you're a Man City fan. Yeah. It is, well, what I was just talking about, I think it's 19, 19 shots faced, 14 goals conceded. But you can't but win it, a title conceding those sort of goals, Paul. Uh, look, he's, he's come in, um, and I've been really surprised because the last two years at Barcelona, he's been a consistent, experienced goalkeeper yep. for Chile and for Barcelona, and, and even before that. Um, and it has taken him a while to adjust to the Premier League. But at the same time, I don't think you can just point the blame at him. No, no, that's you know, what, yeah, you're a, a, right. As a team, you've got to defend. Yeah. And that comes from the front, it comes from your back four, it comes from your midfielders as well. I agree. And you can't pin all the... But I think he's an easy target at the minute. Well, we didn't take any of those in our treble, actually. So City, 11-10, to 10, the draw 5-2, to two, Spurs 13-5. to five. That's a big price for Spurs, the way they Because yeah, they were absolutely... Do you know, what they, you know what they looked like against West Brom, who are a big physical team, by the way? Yeah. They look stronger and more physical than West Brom did. They are. Look, I really like the look of them. Um, seven games unbeaten, 21 goals scored, Done well, three they? goals conceded. Um, I think they'll miss Vertonghen. I think he's a big, yeah, big, big, miss, big player for Rocks the boat a bit yeah, for him. Yeah, he is. He's a leader. Um, and he gives Pochettino the option to play the three centre-backs that he likes to do at times as right. well. 
um, and, and they'll miss him, but I think it's, it's going to be a really good game. Be a great really game. Good be game. an absolute game. And of course, every week on our Premier League preview, we give you a triple chance bet, which is a single bet, but it gives you three players to score first. And in this game, it will be Kane, De Bruyne and Eriksen to score the first goals. Now, I don't have odds on that, sorry about that, but of course, on their bet save preview, if you just click on the link somewhere below us here, then you will be able to have a bet on the uh, Manchester City Spurs game if you fancy the triple chance bet. Chelsea against Hull. Is there any chance for Hull? Uh, look, the, the new managers went in there, Marco Silva, and he's, he's got them playing a bit. They were, they were unlucky against Man United in the Cup. Yeah, probably they lost 2-0. all right, to be fair, didn't they? Yeah, um, I agree. And then they, they had a great result last week, winning 3-1 at home. Yep. Um, after going 1-0 down, I think Hernandez coming back in. The one thing, and I feel sorry <laughs> for Mike feeling a little bit, because yeah. they were creating chances, but they didn't know to put them away. If Robert Snodgrass wasn't involved in the goal, they were doing nothing. Is he going to stay? A lot, a lot of clubs interested in Snodgrass. I, I think if Snoddy goes, I, I would worry for Hull. Yeah, that's I what I really mean. do. Cause he's, Having he's said that, you're saying you're worrying for Hull. I'll just give you the odds uh, on the game. Chelsea, 2 to 11. Heavily odds against, of course, as you can imagine. Odds on, sorry, I apologise. 33 to 5, the draw. 17 to 1, Hull. 17 to 1. Chelsea to win to nil, in other words, to win the game and for Hull not to score. Again, their odds on 2 to 3. I just think. There'll be other games that they might be targeting and get points to try and stay in the division, but all they really don't want is a hiding, is it? No, they don't. And look, I, I was really impressed with Chelsea last week because mm. they were under a bit of pressure. Yep. Um, after losing to Tottenham, then they had the whole scenario with Diego Costa, um, who was, who's been their main player all year, yeah, and they, they go to Leicester and win three 0 and Pedro was sensational as they were playing up top and Hazard and Willian. Are you surprised that they've gone for Marco Silva as manager, Hall? Yeah, I am. As in, uh, not yeah. an English manager or. Uh, look, don't, don't get me started on no, I know, foreign managers well, coming true, in. Yeah, but I just mean, he was a kind of left field decision. He but, was. But then again, of course, gets a result with the, you know, the 1 3 1. Yep, and you know, knowing a couple of the players there, obviously Snoddy, yep. um, who I always like to give a mention, yeah. um, they've, they've been really impressed with how he works. Really, really impressed behind the scenes. and um, It's shown that it's only two games in, but he's mm. had two good performances. Well, good luck to Hall, of course, and if you do fancy Hall, maybe to keep Chelsea, or certainly to frustrate Chelsea, then. 33 to 5 would be your draw. Liverpool against Swansea. I think banker of and the weekend. Well, yeah. Well, okay. 3 to 13 odds on. Heavily odds on Liverpool. 29 to 5 the draw. Swansea 13 to 1. Right. Liverpool half time, full time, 7 to 12. Their odds on. That could be that. 133 to 1 for Swansea. Yeah, you know, it probably could be. Yeah. They They're really struggling, aren't they? They are. And look, Paul Clements went in. He's tried to bring a, a couple of players in. Um, are Olsen from Norwich and, and Tom Carroll from Tottenham. Mm. Good players, but are the sort of players you need when you're in a relegation battle. I'm surprised they didn't go out and buy proper men yeah, I know who, mean, yeah. who have been in that situation yeah, before exactly. to, to try and drag themselves out of it. Well, listen, the Swans, I don't want to disappoint you or certainly turn you down the wrong way, but Liverpool, top goal scorers with 49 goals. They've only had two losses. Coutinho's back from injury. They've not lost at home all season. Seven wins and two draws. And Swansea are bottom of the league. And continue. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to make a case for Swansea. I mean, good luck to them. But again, they, they, they're not necessarily looking at a game at Anfield thinking, oh, we can get three points here. We just don't want to hide and to make sure some of our confidence is hopefully for, for the following week. You know what? That, that might work for them. No yeah, pressure exactly, on them. Yeah. No, nobody's expecting them to go to Anfield and get in. So having that little bit of pressure of relegation and being at home and having to get points mm. and going to Anfield and enjoying it, it might just do something. But I can't see it. I think Coutinho coming back with Manny missing and um, going to the African Cup yeah. of Nations is, is huge for Liverpool. Absolutely. Well, good luck to the Swans, although I do think Liverpool, as odds on, are probably going to win the game. I've let, I've kept this one to the last because I nearly put this in one of my trebles. You just took the one to Stoke the against Manchester United. Now, I know Man United have done brilliant, but Stoke, having gone to Sunderland and won in a hack canter, by the way, at home, Stoke are 53-10 to 10 in sets. You're getting over fives on Stoke. The draw's 3-1. to one. United are 7-12, to 12, odds on. <sighs> I don't, I know, it's a tough game for Manchester United. You know, well, I, I, and I've spoke to you about this before, um, I nearly put Stoke in my treble. Yeah, I'm, on not, this I'm one. not surprised, genuinely. Purely because, and you know, we have <coughs> spoke about it. When I was with Mark Hughes at Blackburn, mm -hmm. he had an unbelievable knack of us getting results against the big teams, yeah. and especially Man United. You know, the two years Mark was there, um, I don't think Man United beat us. No. We went to Old Trafford and won. Um, we had a couple of draws, we beat them at Ewood Park and he's got this great knack of knowing how to set up against Manchester United teams and for that reason alone 
and that's nearly, nearly. Yeah, no. I mean, to be fair, we're, we're making a case for Stoke City after a lovely result up at Sunderland yesterday. Manchester United is a different animal altogether. Ibrahimovic is on fire. It was a good game. I did think Liverpool probably maybe did enough, maybe even just to sneak it, but a draw is probably a fair result. But they're getting Stoke off a win, and Man United yeah, need to bounce back <coughs> after. I honestly don't think they played that well against Liverpool. No, they didn't. You've got to give Liverpool credit as well. I thought Absolutely. they set up tactically for the first 60, 70 minutes. Great. Um, as much as I'm trying to make a case for Stoke, I think uh, Man United are looking really, really yeah. good at the minute. You know, it's talking about Ibra, 19 goals in 19 games. Yeah, it's a good Pogba's it's a good hitting return. a bit of form. Absolutely. Carrick's keeping that run going that they don't get beat with, with the start. And yeah. Just all over, they look really, really good. And because of that, I've done draw half time, United full time, 33 to 10 if you fancy that. Well, that was week 22 on our Premier League preview. Remind you about Paul's treble. Bournemouth, Everton and West Ham all to win at 14 to 1. And my treble of West Brom, Leicester and Everton all to win at 17 to 1. You might have noticed we're not at the Etihad. We're in an unbelievably good location for our Premier League 22 here on Betsafe. We're at Arigi Bianchi in Macclesfield, a beautiful, famous furniture interior design shore, uh, store and showroom. Thanks to Nick Bianchi, it's going to cost him a bottle and a bit of lunch. This has been, been Betsy's <laughs> Premier League preview. Good luck to you, of course, with all your bets at the weekend. If you've got your own, then no problem. Remember, if you're a new customer and you've a £10 bet, Betsafe will give you £20 absolutely free. As I always say, best price, Betsafe, here on Betsafe Land. Good luck with all your bets. We'll see you next week for Preview 23.